Gabriella Gonzalez, how do you rub it into your scalp without rubbing it into your hair? <laughs> Gabriella, I feel like this is a trick question. How do you rub shampoo into your scalp without rubbing it into your hair? Is this like some kind of trick question? Welcome to another episode of responding to your comments. My goodness, we are getting so many comments on the page and I'm loving the interaction that we've got going on on YouTube. We're gonna be looking at fun questions, we're gonna be looking at health questions. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Ashish Nath, bro, please, please, please do a video on tattoo aftercare. How to care for a tattoo after it's inked. Please help. Ashish, thank you for your comment. This is a great question actually. And in fact, the surgery that I work at has two tattoo studios very close to it. So I see a lot of patients who've just had a tattoo. And also, I've developed a very close relationship with the actual tattoo artist who really know their stuff. So the first information I'm gonna to give to you is that you should always follow the instructions from your tattoo artist because different styles of tattoos can have different aftercare. Now in terms of what do I recommend? Well, as a healthcare professional, you need to remember that when you've had a tattoo, it's a wound. And that wound is gonna to have to go through its healing process. Now this healing process varies from patient to patient, but generally speaking, it takes about four weeks for it to fully recover. So as it is a wound, after your tattoo artist has finished doing your tattoo, they will cover it with either cling film or a bandage, they might even use something else. But generally speaking, for these two items, if they have used them, they're usually left on for several hours or sometimes overnight, but this all depends on the advice from your tattoo artist. Now, once you then remove this bandage or the cling film, it's gonna have some plasma on there, it might have a little blood on there, it might be a bit of ink, and then you need to wash it. So the way you wash it is very gently, you need to wash it with lukewarm water and soap. Now here's probably the most important bit. As a healthcare professional, we know that research has shown that when you have a wound, you need to keep it moist. And by keeping it moist, it's gonna heal better, it's gonna heal quicker, and probably have less complications as well. The old advice from a long, long time ago was to let wounds dry out. And this advice is so outdated now, which is the reason why when it comes to tattoo wounds, you need to keep it moist as well. What you don't wanna do is let the wound dry out because if you do let it dry out, you're at risk of it scabbing and it can lead to a loss of ink, which is why many tattoo artists recommend that you moisturize several times a day to keep the wound moist and I completely agree with them. You may then cover it with cling film or bandage as long as your tattoo artist has advised you to do so. Now, the most important thing though is keeping that moisture content high. So reapply, reapply, reapply at least three to five times a day, I would say. Now you're probably thinking, but Abraham, what cream do you recommend? Well, generally speaking, I always recommend a cream that contains dexpanthenol. So the best thing to do is just Google dexpanthenol cream and find a brand that's available wherever you are in the world and purchase that. The reason I recommend dexpanthenol is that studies have shown that it does help with injured and irritated skin. Wow, this is becoming a very long answer and my brain is kind of working in overdrive to give you as much information as possible. So one thing that I always get asked as well by many patients is how do you know if the wound is infected? Generally speaking, you need to keep an eye out on the wound and if you're getting things like a fever, if the area is getting swollen, if it's getting red, if it's getting tender to touch, if there's pus, Anything like this really can be a sign of an infection and you will have to speak to a healthcare professional about it and might need treatment. I guess another thing I can do is leave some more information in the description below for you about what to look out for for an infected wound, which will be very helpful. Some people can also have an allergic reaction to the tattoo ink. Now it's not very common, but what you need to also look out for is very itchy skin and any inflammation or swelling around the area. This can be a sign that you're having an allergy to the ink. So if you are having these sort of symptoms, you need to speak to a healthcare professional as well. And lastly, when it comes to showering, you can shower, just be very gentle on the area that you've had the tattoo, just so you're not causing it any more distress. But what I wouldn't do is go to saunas, swimming pools, or use the bath for at least four weeks just so it can prevent you from getting an infection. I really hope my tips help. Thank you for your comment. I will also leave more information in the description below to some really useful pages with more information about tattoo aftercare. So how do you rub it into your scalp without rubbing it into your hair? Gabriella, thank you for your comment. This is from the How to Treat Dandruff video and they're on about shampoo and how you can rub it into your scalp without getting onto your hair. Now, I don't know if this is some sort of trick question, but in all honesty, it doesn't matter if it gets on your hair, you just need to get into your scalp so it'll work better. Um, but if it is a sort of trick question or a riddle, then I don't know the answer to it. But speaking of riddles, I do really enjoy riddles. And if anyone has a good one, 
please leave a comment below because I would love to include it in future episodes. I'm responding to your comments. Q <laughs> is a hard username. QPGTYUI1. This is a very hard username. So if I've said it wrong, I'm sorry. Everything went fine until I opened the cap and it started flowing non-stop and I was thinking it might stop, but it didn't. Definitely the hardest thing I've done in my life. Thank you for your comment. This is from the how to use an ointment video, an eye ointment. This has happened to me many occasions when I was younger. In fact, I remember once I opened an ointment, which I wasn't supposed to do, and I pierced the foil on the top and then it started flowing out. I feel like it usually happens on metal cream containers. It happens more this. And it had a very narrow end and it started flowing out and it kept flowing and it kept flowing. And I was having a panic attack. So I was looking at this and I was like, oh my God, my mum is gonna kill me. And then I put the top on and it made a mess. It went everywhere. Yeah, true story. In fact, this kind of reminds me of another time when I was younger. By the way, I was a bit of a crazy kid when I was younger. I kind of just like grew out of this craziness and became what I am today. But I was a very, what's the word? Naughty kid growing up. I think that's the best way to describe it. And I remember once, for some strange reason, I opened this fire extinguisher and it was like a foam one and it had a twisty top that you twisted like this and it started flowing and it wouldn't stop and I tried to close it and it was flowing and it was like foam and it was expanding and it went everywhere in the room. Yeah, I got in a lot of trouble for that. I don't recommend anyone to do that. Fire extinguishers should be there, do not touch them. They are there for emergencies. But thank you for your comment. Tyra Carter, favorite part of this video, vitamin deficiencies, vit e men deficiencies. I think, what you're getting at is the way that British people pronounce vitamin, we say vitamin, but I imagine you might be in the US where they say vitamin, or you have to kind of pronounce it American, like vitamin deficiencies. By the way, I'm really bad at accents, but if you thought that was good, please let me know in the comments below. Looks like we've run out of time again in this week's video. If I didn't get back to your comment, I'm really sorry. Please leave another comment and I'll try my best to get back to you in a future episode. Always remember you're awesome and I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.